Yeah, good evening, it's Jim from jagfx.com. It is Sunday. I should change the date on this. <laughs> Sunday, the 12th of March, 2023. It is actually take two. I tried to do this video yesterday. I was in non pen in a hotel and the internet just dropped out and I couldn't even use my phone starter. So I apologize for the lateness. It is Sunday, the 12th of March, 2023. Just my weekly analysis video where we have a look at the pairs I'm trading on the daily time frame. This is in Forex using the high probability and divergence trading methods from my books. So this is going to be a pretty quick video because I'm really tired, I've got to get some sleep. So first up, we normally have a look at the news for the week ahead. First up, if you like these videos, could you please hit the like button or subscribe button, that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, news, what we got? Now this is just your Forex factory free economic calendar. Uh, the good thing is you can just set it up, you can set filters on it. So I'm only looking at high impact events these days, which are all the red ones. And these gray ones was um, daylight savings changed, or there's been a shift of daylight savings in the US and Canada over the weekend, today actually, Sunday. So that may affect your broker, depending on where your broker's based with regards to when it opens, etc. So just be careful, especially if you're trading something like four hour charts or the daily charts. Not so much one hour or anything like that, but you know, four, six, eight. All right, what have we got this week in news? Um, out of the UK, climate count, CPI numbers out of the US on Tuesday, nothing on Monday. Uh, Wednesday, the budget release out of the UK, I'm not sure how that affects the currency markets and retail sales, etc., out of the US on Wednesday also. A fair bit of action happened there. Probably the big one is the Australian employment change or unemployment numbers on Thursday and on also on Thursday the European, the Euro um, interest rates, the main, the, what they call it, the main refinancing rate, which is basically just their interest rates in Europe based on the Euro. And not much else weeks, so just be a careful, especially for day trade around major news events. So as I said, I'm just going to rip through this pretty quick tonight. Um, Generally, if you haven't watched one of my videos before, there's a lot of indicators and settings, different colors on the charts. Just have a look at this Word document. Just pause the video, have a read of it. It explains all the um, different colors, etc., and all the setups and that. So if you're a little bit confused, um, like I always say, if, if you haven't any problems, just get in one of the JagFX social media groups, whether it be the Facebook group, Telegram, or Matt from Family Man's Discord channel, or just contact me via email. And you can ask any question you want, no dramas. Um, so just have a read of that. I generally go through it all in the charts in a way, so... Yeah, and I appreciate that not everyone understands why English is not the, everyone's first language, or you don't understand the Australian accent, so... I'm trying to add subtitles to the videos, but I keep on forgetting. I'm not sure if I'm doing it or not. I should check that. So have a read of that. Now let's get onto the charts. Now I do all my analysis on TradingView. This is TradingView. This is my watch list on the right. Uh, it's in alphabetical order. It's not all 28 pairs, just a sample size of pairs that I look at. Uh, you'll see they're highlighted different colors. Light blue means there's a trade on and some trade management's been taken. Yellow means there's something I want to talk about in this video. No highlight means no trade on. And dark blue means trade on and no action taken as yet. Now, I did make some notes. I'm just going to pause the video because I forgot where I put them. Yeah, all good. Just lost my notes there for a bit. Um, all right, so this is my watch list on the right. Um, on the chart itself, generally you'll see the... The writing on the right side of the chart is normally the latest trade. You'll sometimes see two trades two trades on or some other older trades. Just I just leave them on there for some relevance, that's all. And I just tidy up the charts every week. Um, so you'll see the date, the signal, whether it's buy or sell, and my thoughts on the trade and any trade management. Now, the trades are called live at the... Oh, pardon me. They're called live at the time, so on the day of the trades taken... I call the trade, it's not after the fact, it's generally within an hour, an hour or two hours after the market open, and or the new daily candle, and I take a screenshot of that trade and share it with a group, all those groups I mentioned previously, and any trade management's also called at the time. So it's all very transparent, and these are only trade examples, I'm not a trade signal provider or anything like that. So as you can see, there's a cell here, this cell is the red, 
So the sell was on the 1st of Feb, so on the open, went against me. The initial stop was up here somewhere. I can't remember where it was. And, oh, there it was, 9.5. So up here, up here somewhere, yep. Yeah. Um, so then February the 7th, we closed half, which is when the price would have come down to in here, I'd say, yep. The moving average, MACD platinum through the zero level. It's just one of my trade management rules. Close half. Then on the 8th of March, I've moved my stop down, just trailing my stop nice and tight like an end profit now. You see green lines on the charts like this. They're normally a big round number. In this case, it's the 90 cent level. You see prices come down to it, a little bit of a bounce there. In the meantime, I'm drawing potential divergence trend lines in here. In this case, it's a potential um, hidden bullish divergence. So if, if I keep on drawing this and I adjust it, adjust it, it's no longer, if it's no longer valid, or no longer divergence, then I'll just remove from the chart. So that's the AusCAD in a cell, looking good, can't lose on it, so it's all good. Oz Japanese Yen, also on a cell trade from the 23rd of Feb. There's some older trades here, so close on opposite Q&P filter for loss, and second attempt close on a, so I've had two. See the MACD platinum's above the zero level, so I'm always, generally, generally, not always, looking to sell when it's above the zero level. So I've had three cracks at this sell, and eventually, bang, we nailed it. We got it. Um, so we've done the 8th of March closed half, so that's in here somewhere. Yeah, we just got down to these previous lows here, closed half. I couldn't do, take much action when the MACD platinum went through the zero level because I wasn't far below my entry level, so I just waited a little bit, and it held and down nicely. So now we've closed half, moved our stop down, we can't lose on the Aussie Yen, which offsets some of these losses, the previous losses. So it's all good there. Aussie USD in one trade, a sell from the 3rd of Feb. So here it is up here. These numbers, these big green lines, remember I said they're big numbers. In this case, it's the 65 cent level and the 70 cent level. Uh, it's come down nicely. We've, done, we've taken some trade action here. So the Feb closed half, so I reckon that's going to come down here. Yep. Back D platinum through the zero level. Price at the moving average. It's against the trend trade. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping a closer eye on these sort of trades. So I've closed half there. It's come down further. And 24th of Feb moved the stop right down lower. So where's that? 20, I don't want to say 24th of Feb stop down to 7025. Ah, uh, yeah, something's happened there. I've moved my, I've moved my stop down. Or I haven't made a note of it in the chart, but yeah, I don't know why I haven't done that. All right, so yeah, I've moved my stop down even closer. I'm pretty sure I called that in the groups the other day. I just haven't marked it on my chart, so I'll make a note of that when I finish this video. So my stop is down lower, and it was called. I remember calling it, but I just didn't write it. Um, so yeah, it's down here now, Lockie, and can't lose on the Oz, Aussie USD. Eurocad, highlighting orange, there's a reason for that. Um, just check my notes. Yeah, stop there, I was Captain Obvious. All right, we've got a few trades going on here, all right? So let's have a look. This is one I'm gonna have to tidy up after the... I just leave these trades on the charts it's for my weekend videos so I can, sh I can show you guys that what's happened. So it's just, I will tidy up the chart when I'm finished. So what, what have we got here? We've got a buy all the way from um, 8th of November. So we're still in that, can't lose. That's this information here. So we can't lose on that. We're dragging the stop up slowly. So there's a, there's the stop loss for the buy. In the meantime, the, the market's basically gone sideways. Uh, we took a sell in here. That'll be 21st of December, yep. Um, nah. What am I doing here? Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, that's a cell that's been stopped out. So this one's been stopped out. I've got to write that on the chart too. So this cell, 21st of December, 3rd of Jan, closed on opposite QMP. No, I'm not even, we're not even close. What am I doing here? That's a 3rd of December and there, it's second. 21st of December. Sorry, guys, I'm a little bit confused myself here. Oh, yeah. Cell was in there on that grey line. This one here, where are we? Here we go. Here we go. Right. 27th of Jan. Let's see, get the right date. Yes, we're on it. Took a sell. Uh, 8th of Feb, closed half. So I'm reckoning in here somewhere. Yeah, in here. So on the open there. 
Um, the MACD was already through the zero level, but I like this double sort of top. And, and so as soon as we got down to the moving average, it's closed half. And the stop was moved down. And it put me in a no-lose position. Even though we got stopped out and we took a loss on the second part, the first part was probably the same. So it's all the... Depending on where you put your stop and where you got you exited, for me it was a break-even trade. So it was an overall break-even trade. So let's get that one out and done with. In the meantime, we've taken a buy on the first of March. Let's get more, and it's going up nicely. And seventh of March stops being moved up. So let's have a look at seventh of March. Yeah, I think it just popped up here, got to the, near these previous highs. MACD platinum through the zero level. So I've just dragged my stop up. Now it's pushed up nicely. So I'm getting rid of all this. Other trades, I'll tie, like I said, I'll tie out these charts when I'm finished, but the sell, the sell's done. I'll get rid of this, that's just confusing me having that one there. I'll get rid of this one. Oh, man, nothing's going up in. So this is this one here, the sell. We're out of that. So we've just got two buy trades on now. And looking okay on both of them. So that's all right, I'll get rid of that. So we just got the two buy trades on, so it's pretty lot tidied up. Don't have to tidy up the chart. What are you doing? All right, Euro Yen. Now there was a signal, and I do apologise for Friday. For some reason, I didn't do an update at all. I'm not sure. I've had a bit of a brain fade the last couple of days and having internet problems, and went up the non pen on Thursday, and I'm just in a hotel and the Wi-Fi was crap. I don't know what was going. On. But there was a new sell signal on. Um, Friday morning, so on the open of this candle, I didn't call it, so I'm not going to put it on the chart. Um, look, it'd be high risk trade, but there's a little bit of divergence there. You can see it there. The MACD Platinum has got sort of lower highs and higher highs on price. But price is pretty close to the moving averages already. It's, look, it's not a great signal by any means. And so it's no skin off my nose not taking this trade. But that's just the Euro Yen. Yeah, I probably would have called it on Friday as a, as a sell, but it'd be a, it'd be a, it's a high risk trade, as I said. Euro New Zealand, um, highlighting orange, and that's because the trade's been stopped out. It was actually stopped out a couple of days ago, and I called it in the group. I think I might know because I didn't do the update on Friday. Uh, just checking my notes. Jeez, I'm all over the shop today, aren't I? So the buy is good. We're going to buy from. Um, where, where, we buy signal, 14th of Feb? Yeah, that's it. No, nope, not even close. Here's this boy. That's a silly idiot. 26th of Jan. Yeah, here we go. All right, we're going to buy there. There's been some trade management. Can't lose on that. So all good. All good on that buy. And it's just going up. So I took a sell on the, um, is that 2nd of March? And it's basically just got against me right from the get-go. And I closed it before it, I closed it on this candle, this open of this candle here, this little um, bearish candle there. I close it then because there's an opposite QMP for the dot. So that's that's what I mean by that. That was noted on the charts at the time. I noted in the groups at the time. So I didn't let it get to the stop, even though now it's gone up and continued up and hit, went through the stop, but the, the trade's already closed. So I took a loss, a smaller loss. So I saved myself a few pips there. In the meantime, we're in a partial buy. We can't lose on, so it's all good. I'll tidy that chart up once we're finished. Euro USD highlight an orange, and it's because I closed out my buy, which I'm probably regretting now. All right, so we're in a sell. Let's get the right date: 31st of Jan. We're in a sell. There's been some trade action on that. Not a great deal, but we've eventually closed half. So let's have a look. 14th of Feb. I think I'll let it. Yeah. So the open of this candle here closed uh, closed half and the stop was moved down, just tight things right up. In the meantime, it's continued down. New buy signal here, took that buy, so that was on the um, 28th of Feb. Then we've got an opposite QMP filter dot here on the 8th. So that was closed on the 9th for a small loss on an opposite. So I didn't let it go down into the stop, and it hasn't gone anywhere near the stop, but I closed it anyway, took the small loss. Now looking for a possible re-entry. Uh, that's hence the grey vertical line is a green dot on the MACD platinum below the zero level. So generally I'm looking to buy when it's below the zero level and sell when it's above the zero level. 
So it's basically looking for a re-entry on a possible buy on the euro. This green dashed line here is parity, 1.00, huge number on the euro. We've got a little bit of a support base here. This blue line is, is normally used for trend lines or support resistance levels. Uh, we've got some divergence still happening. The MACD platinum is still below the zero level, so we're looking for another buy. In the meantime, I've got a partial sell on, so I can't lose on the sell. It's just giving me some protection. I think this is going to go up. There's no new trade signal for Monday on this, so not as yet. So I'll probably have to wait another day if it has another bullish day. That's the Euro USD. Like I said, I'll just leave these on the charts to show you guys. Pound Aussie. Bang, look at that. Hey, we're in a good buy here. Buy was taken with a MACD platinum below the zero level. Um, when was that? 7th of Feb. Make sure we've got the right date this time. Yep. Um, so we had a buy on the 19th of Jan. So let's have a look at that one. So that's this one. And it was closed for a small loss. So I took it in here, closed it here. Small loss. An opposite Q and P filter dot. So I didn't let it get to the stop. And now we've got a second buy. Uh, MACD platinum still below the zero level, still got divergence. Here's your divergence there, regular bullish divergence. Bang, it's gone up nicely. Cracked its previous high, and Thursday and Friday were really kind to us. So, what I could probably do is start trailing the stop up now. That's all I can do. Generally, I like to keep the stop between the 50 and the 100 moving averages. So, that's but we're looking good. My next trade, I think I saw mentioned in the Telegram channel or something. The next trade I'll be looking at this would be a sell. It'd be I'm already in a buy, so I'm not entering any more buys or anything like that. So that's a pound Aussie, looking good. Pound Swiss, looking good on one trade, not so good in the other one, right? So I'll go through this. So our sell from the 7th of March, it's here, is going okay. Stop loss is still up here. MACD Platinum, I'll give it one more day. Uh, it's the trend's down, so I'm looking at the, the dark line, the, oh, the, the orangey, browny looking line. It's nearly at the zero level. Um, the light blue line's pretty hard to see in the video. It, the faster line, it's already through, but we're with the trend here, so I'll, I'll give it a bit of room. Hopefully we'll break this previous low here. Uh, where's my mouse going? The shock with technology this weekend. All right, um, in the meantime, we're in this buy here. Now, we took this buy on the 13th of Feb. Already closed out half, and I closed out half. First of March. Yeah. So I actually did pretty well there. Took the close, closed out half on the open of that bearish candle there. Got to the 240 moving average. That was a very smart call by me. And the stop has already moved up, so I'd already tightened up the stop. So we can't lose on the on the buy if we get stopped out. It's a small, it'll be a small overall profit. And if it does get stopped out, it means the sell's going okay. We'll just try to stop down the sell and we'll do all right there. Nice, clean moves on this pair. As you can, if you just followed the, you just took every signal on the dot that you can see on the chart, you, you would make money. Right, pound yen. Uh, we're in a sell trade on this and we've taken no trade action as yet. It's just gone sideways. It was only taken on the 8th of March, so on Wednesday. MACD platinum still above the zero level. There was divergence there. And Friday it threatened to go against me, but then it's come down nicely. So we're just above the entry level. So that's the pound yen. Pound Aussie. <coughs> oh, I'm very close to hitting the stop here. But let's look at the trade first. A sell from the 1st of Feb. Now I've taken some trade action there. I'll just move this stuff so it's easy to read. There we go. Took some so 7th of Feb closed half. I'm thinking it'll be in here somewhere. Yep. Nice big move down. Price in the MAs. MACD platinum through the zero level. Against the trend. Closed half. Tightened up the stop on the 14th of Feb. So I dragged the stop down above this high here. And we're looking good on the sell. In the meantime, took this buy on the 14th of Feb. And it came very close to my stop. That day there, where's my stop loss? 17981, yeah, 17981. Just look up here, uh, where's the lows there? Look up in this area here when I put my candle across and look at the stop loss. So the low there's 1803, and the high is 179, sorry, the stop loss is at 1798. So they were three, five pips of close, come within five pips of hitting the stop, so it was slow there, so it's good. Um, 
Yeah, so it's looking, it's heading up the right direction, and we can't lose on the cell, so all good. New Zealand cat, highlighting orange, and there must be a reason for that, I'll find out in a minute. Uh, in a cell, so no dramas on the cell, that's the 1st of Feb, 10th of Feb, move my stop down, 27th of Feb, closed half, so let's have a look, 27th of Feb, it's in, uh, come on, Jim, wake up, yeah. So we price has gone sideways. <sighs> yeah, it's just going nowhere. So I decided to close half. The stop had already been tightened up, so I just took a little bit of profit, locked in, can't lose. In the meantime, I took taking this buy. Now there's a oh yeah, eighth of March. Another one like the Euro. Here's your buy. So the it was taken on the where the blue line is, and I closed it on the open of this little bullish candle here. So I took a small loss on there on the opposite QMP filter dot. And you look, potentially there's another buy coming up on this, and I'll have to have a think about it whether I'm going to take it or not because the MACD platinum is already above the zero level. But you've still got this divergence in play, so yeah, I'll have a think about it. So we closed this buy for a small loss on the 8th of March. So I'll tidy that chart up once the video is done. What have we got here? All right, USD CAD. Pierre, I don't like trading, as always. Whinge about, but this trade's going okay. We're in a buy from the 6th of Feb. Now you can read my notes. 17th of Feb, I close, uh, moved my stop up. So we went to 17th of Feb. So here, the original initial stop was at 131971. I moved my stop up. And 24th of Feb, closed half. So I reckon it'd be around here somewhere. Yeah. We just struggled on a bit and we got up near these previous highs, MACD these well and truly through the zero level, so closed half. And it's just been going up nicely, grinding up. Now it's broken these previous highs, so yeah. Can't lose on the USD CAD, USD Japanese yen. Uh, yeah, we're in two cells, still this cell. This is probably one of my oldest trades from the 24th of October. There's a stop loss there, you can read my trade management. Uh, then we had another sell on the 6th of March. Uh, it's, the stop has always been at the same level, I think. I don't think I've, yeah, I haven't changed the stop at all. Came close to the stop and it's rolled over nicely and we're heading down the right direction now. So as you can see, the MACD platform above the zero level, there's divergence there and some um, resistance level. So it's a bit of confluence of things. So that's USD Japanese yen in two trades. One we can't lose on, the other one's going okay. Gold. Now, I think this is my one and only new trade for Monday. Right, I haven't marked up on the chart yet. You'll have to wait for the trade screenshot on Monday. Uh, there's going to be a buy. Now, the good thing about tra trading view compared to MT4, MT5, if you looked at your MT4, MT5 for the same template on your chart, you wouldn't know there was going to be a buy on Monday unless you had the QQE advanced action on the chart and you'd see the cross and you'd also see the cross on the MACD Platinum. So you'd have a fair idea that it's going to happen on Monday if you're on MT4, MT5. The trading view actually presents that QMP. It's a little bit hard to see because under that green line, this green line's the 1800 level, $1,800 level. It's a big round number. This one up here's the 2000 level. So we've got support here. There's a sort of a double low. I was in a buy here originally, and I closed it here for a small loss on this opposite QMP filter dot. And... So now we've got a new buy on Monday. So it's going to be, the entry's going to be up here somewhere. Or if, if it market opens close to where it closed on Friday, that's where it's going to, the buy will be in there. And the stop will probably be just pull up a little bit higher under the 1800 level there. So that will I'll probably bring the stop. You'll see it all in the trade screenshot. So the stop will be from here. The trade will be there. The stop will just be below the 1800. Entry will be here somewhere. We've still got this sell on. We can't lose on the sell. What have we done here? Um, 30th of Jan. Yep, that's it. Um, 6th of Feb closed half. So let's have a look. Where's that? In here, I think. Yeah. There's a, a high, high risk trade against the trend. Trend was up. Once price got down and near the moving averages, closed half. Now, I'll probably look at bringing that stop down even tighter, probably above this candle here. So bring it inside my entry. I'll have a do that on, I'll call that on Monday, I think. So, yeah, I'll look at bringing my stop in. I'm going to take a buy here. I might as well lock in, make sure I don't lose on the second part of gold and lock in some profit. 
So it's a new buy trade on gold, XAU USD on Monday. That's my only new trade signal. These other three, US dollar, I'm just looking at these pairs just to show you. These are all the trades, valid signals marked on the chart. Just more out of curiosity, nothing else. There was a last one with a sell here. There's a red dot there. Some divergence or resistance level there, so it's all good. And it went against me, and there's more divergence. You can see price went higher, whereas the MACD Platinum didn't. And now it's starting to roll over to the downside. It's even a red dot on the MACD Platinum above the zero level. So hopefully heading back down. US 500, the US stock market. Um, last signal was a buy here. You'd probably be out of it now. be the smart thing to do. This would have been a tough, a valid buy signal. There's no doubt about it. MACD Platinum below the zero level. Market's very flat, and if you watch any of my videos, this line's been on the chart forever. It keeps on getting there and having tr troubles breaking through it. Didn't even get to it this time. It rolled over to the downside. And the correlation between the US stock market and Bitcoin. Drag Bitcoin down also. Last signal was a sell up here. Nice divergence there, big divergence there. Sell, stalled around the moving averages there and then dropped down to the 20,000 level, and now we've had a bit of a bounce over the weekend. Remember, it's a 24-7 market. But we've had a bounce over the weekend, which is good because I've got some, what they call, bottom feeder bots on. So, yeah, that's good. It gets a bounce. Hopefully, it'll head back up to 25,000. Uh, yeah, so that's it for the charts. I'll probably rush through it a bit quick tonight. Um, like I said, it's late on Sunday, and I do apologise that... that Tripping on pen just threw me out of whack, and that, I don't know why I stayed at hotel. The Wi Fi is always crap. But anyhow, if you like the videos, guys and girls, could you hit the like button, subscribe button? That'd be greatly appreciated. Hope your weekend went okay. I'm just about to put my head down for a sleep once I get this uploaded. I've just about had my quota of partying and drinking. Too old for this crap now. And I'll chat to you, good folk, tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Cheers.